rise. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. We gather today in the presence of God to give thanks for the gift of marriage, to witness the joining together of Adam and Christina, to surround them with our prayers, and to ask God's blessing upon them so that they may be strengthened for their life together and nurtured in their love of God. God created us male and female and gave us marriage so that husband and wife may help and comfort each other, living faithfully together in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health throughout all their days. God gave us marriage for the full expression of the love between a man and a woman. In marriage, a woman and a man belong to each other and with affection and tenderness freely give themselves to each other. God gave us marriage for the well-being of human society and for the ordering of family life and for the birth and nurture of children. God gave us marriage as a holy mystery in which a man and a woman are joined together and become one, just as Christ is one with the church. In marriage, husband and wife are called to a new way of life, created, ordered, and blessed by God. This way of life must not be entered into carelessly or from selfish motives, but responsibly and prayerfully. We rejoice that marriage is given by God, blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ, and sustained by the Holy Spirit. And therefore, let marriage be held in honor by all. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are always faithful in your love for us, Look mercifully upon Christina and Adam, who come seeking your blessing today. Let your Holy Spirit rest upon them, so that with steadfast love they may honor the promises that they make this day, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the congregation may be seated. And so, Adam, understanding that God has created, ordered, and blessed the covenant of marriage, do you affirm your desire and intention to enter this covenant? If so, answer, I do. I do. And Christina, understanding that God has created, ordered, and blessed the covenant of marriage, do you affirm your desire and intention to enter this covenant? If so, answer, I do. I do. And to the family gathered here today, do you give your blessing to Christina and Adam and promise to do everything in your power to uphold them in their marriage? If so, answer, we do. Yeah. And will all of you witnessing these vows today do everything in your power to uphold Adam and Christina in their marriage? If so, answer, we will. Yeah. Let us pray. God of mercy, your faithfulness to your covenant frees us to live together in the security of your powerful love. Amid all the changing words of our generation, speak your eternal word that does not change. Then may we respond to your gracious promises by living in faith and obedience through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The first reading that Adam and Christina have chosen for today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. And Julie Tews will read it for us this morning, this evening. <laughs> love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy. It does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it does not easily anger, 
it keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. And our second reading this afternoon comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 10 through 18, and will be read by David Bell. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Well, Adam, Christina, here you are. I want you to pause a moment and just look at one another. Look around at all these people gathered here. Mm -hmm. Fix this in your memory. Here you are gathered in the presence of God, in the presence of family and friends, and you are about to pledge yourselves to one another as husband and wife. You're making a promise today that you are going to love one another for better or worse, in sickness and in health, for rich or for poor, throughout all of your days. Think about what you're doing. That's a big promise. You are promising to commit yourselves to a future you know nothing about. You don't know what's coming down the road. Our daughter Ellen, as, as you know, our daughter just got married a couple weeks ago. Last night we got a phone call as they're on their way to the emergency room because she was stapling the back of the couch and put a staple in her hand. Okay. Unexpected things are going to happen, and you just don't know what life will bring. Okay. And yet you're making this promise today. The promise you're making to love one another is not the promise to feel the same way that you do today in five years, or 10 years, or 30 years. The promise you're making to love is not a promise to have an emotion towards one another, but a commitment towards one another. The promise you're making today is to make a decision each and every day to seek what is best for the other. That's what Paul's talking about in 1 Corinthians here. When Paul talks about love being patient, in the context of a marriage, it means you know, there's going to be times when you get frustrated with one another. There's going to be dirty dishes in the sink, dirty socks on the floor, a chore that didn't get done. And you're promising to be patient with one another, to make that decision not based on how you feel, but on the commitment you're making. There are times when you're going to hurt one another and want to strike back, and you're making a promise to be kind anyway. There are times when, when the other is going to do things that, that you wish you could do, when they're going to, going to make it clear that they do this better than you do. I've never been able to make a pie crust well. 
<laughs> My wife is great at it. And at times I'm tempted to be envious. And you're promising to let that go. The promise you're making today is to commit yourselves to decide minute by minute, day by day, month by month, year by year, to seek what is best for the other. That's the love that you're committing to. And you're making that promise here in the presence of God, in the presence of all these people, because you're not in this alone. This day, this marriage, yes, it's about the two of you, but it's not just about the two of you. And marriage isn't something we do on our own. And so you have family and friends, and you have God, who have committed to help you through this marriage, to make the right decision at the right time, to forgive one another, to care for one another, even when you don't feel like it. Marriage is, is this opportunity, this blessing that we have, uh, of a place where we can practice what it means to love God and to love our neighbor, to do it in a safe place where, where we can grow in doing that. That's why Paul's uh, words in Romans that you chose, I think, are so significant, because you know, there are things in here that are obviously not about marriage, right? That idea of blessing those who persecute you, okay? of, of living in harmony with one another, which does apply, but it also applies to others. Okay? Not repaying evil for evil, being careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Okay? All these things you can practice within your marriage. Okay? One of the things I, I'm pretty sure we talked about uh, in our in our Skype dates as we were doing our premarital counseling, is that you know, when, you, when you commit to this relationship, as you stand here and make these promises, saying yes to one another and no to everyone else, that means that you can practice what it is to love. And when you fail, and you will, be confident that the other is going to be there. They've promised. Okay. So you they're stuck with you. And that means that you can truly be yourself. You can go out on a limb and practice what it means to really love. And as you do that, you will grow in your ability to love one another. You'll grow in your understanding of what it is to receive God's love and love God. And you'll learn what it is to love others in ways beyond what you can imagine now. No one knows what your future holds, only God. But this promise that you are making today will sustain you through whatever is there. Dietrich Bonhoeffer has this, this great quote from a, a wedding he wrote for his friend when he was actually in prison. He couldn't deliver the, the sermon, but he wrote it out for them. And in it he said, your love will not sustain your marriage. But from now on, your marriage will sustain your love. And when that is the case, the love you have for one another is going to spill out so that this marriage will be a blessing to you, but it will also be a blessing to your family and your friends and everyone who knows you. May that be so from this day forward. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. And now I invite you to come forward. Adam and Christina, since it is your intention to marry, join your right hands, and with your promises, bind yourselves to one another as husband and wife. Adam, if you'd repeat after me. I, Adam, take you, Christina, to be my wife. I, Adam, take you, Christina, to be my wife. And I promise. And I promise. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. 
as long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. And Christina? I, Christina, take you, Adam, to be my husband. I, Christina, take you, Adam, to be my husband. And I promise. And I promise. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful wife. To be your loving and faithful wife. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. And in sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. And what do you bring as a sign of your promise? These rings. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord our God, by your blessing, may these rings be to Adam and Christina symbols of unending love and faithfulness, reminding them always of the covenant that they have made this day. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Adam, if you take Christina's ring and placing it over her left finger, repeat after me. Christina, this ring I give you. Christina, this ring I give you. As a sign of our constant faith as a sign of our constant faith and abiding love and abiding love in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And place it over his left finger. Repeat after me. Adam, this ring I give you. Adam, this ring I give you. As a sign of our constant faith as a sign of our constant faith and abiding love and our abiding love in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And let us pray. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of salvation and giver of all grace, look with favor upon the world that you have made and redeemed, and especially upon Adam and Christina. Give them wisdom and devotion in their common life, that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will, and their spirits in your spirit, that they may grow in love and peace with you and each other all the days of their life. Give them the grace when they hurt each other to recognize and confess their fault, and to seek each other's forgiveness and yours. Make their life together a sign of Christ's love to this broken and sinful world, that unity may overcome estrangement, forgiveness heal guilt, and joy conquer despair. Give them such fulfillment of their mutual love that they may reach out in concern for others. Give to them, if it is your will, the gift of children, and the wisdom to bring them up to know you and to love you, and to serve you. Grant that all those who have witnessed these vows today may find their lives strengthened, and that all who are married may depart with their own promises renewed. Enrich with your grace all husbands and wives, parents and children, that loving and supporting one another, they may serve those in need and be a sign of your kingdom. Grant that the bonds by which all your children are united to one another may be so transformed by your spirit that your peace and justice may fill the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before God and in the presence of this congregation, Adam and Christina have made their solemn vows to each other. They have confirmed their promises by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of rings. And therefore, I proclaim they are now husband and wife. Blessed be the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit forever.
Amen. And those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. And you may kiss. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. Okay. You guys can face me if you like. You can even hold hands still. Your husband and wife now, it's okay to hold hands. <laughs> Adam and Christina, receive God's blessing. May God smile on your marriage. May he help you to magnify each other's strengths and to minimize each other's weaknesses. And may you always look at the other through a lover's kind and patient eyes. May he give you enough tears to keep you tender, enough hurt to keep you compassionate, enough failure to keep you humble, and enough success to keep you encouraged. May you never take each other's love for granted, but always experience that breathless wonder that says, out of all the world, you have chosen me. And when the sun sets and the day is done, may you be found then, as now, still hand in hand, still thanking God for one another, until one of you lays the other in the Father's loving arms. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Adam Preddy. Thank you.